Hello students, welcome to this mini lecture. This mini lecture is going to be showing you an example of how to use the algorithmic approach to find the sum of two numbers. If you are going to use the algorithmic approach to find the sum of two numbers and you are going to convert that into a program in any high level language, you need to follow certain approach or certain steps. So the first thing you need to do is if you have to find the sum of two numbers, you need to identify two memory locations to read and store those numbers in those particular locations. For example, what I am doing is I am reading the first number, let's say it's 22 into a memory location, which I call it as A. I am reading the second number, which is 51 into a memory location, which I call it B. And the result of A plus B, I'm going to store it in a third memory location called as sum. So if you see here, sum has 22 plus 51, which happens to be 73. Now, if you look at a computer, what it does is it takes input, does a process and produces an output. So if we have to write an algorithm to find the sum of two numbers, we first need to define or read some numbers into two memory locations, namely A and B. So first what will happen is whenever you're writing any algorithm, the first step is always going to be the word start. You could have start or you could have the word begin. And the last step when you end an algorithm is the word stop or end. So first thing what I need to do is I am going to define three variables A, B and sum. What these three variables are going to do is A is going to store, sorry, store the first number, B is going to store the second number and sum is going to hold the result of A plus B. What I have done is I have assigned A with 0, B also as 0 and sum as 0. Initially it's a good idea to give all the memory locations a value of 0 so that if there is any error in calculations you are able to easily identify it. Now in order to find the sum, I first need to read the values of A and B into their respective memory locations. So what I am doing here is I am asking the user to enter the value of A and B. So the user, let's say enters the value of A as 22 and B as 51. Now since I have the value of A and B, I can easy, easily calculate the sum. So I can say sum is A plus B. Okay, so sum is A plus B or sum is assigned A plus B. Once I calculate the sum, all that I need to do is I need to display the value of sum on the screen. So I'm saying write sum is sum. So I'll explain what is this line. And finally, I will have to indicate it with a stop. So a few things I need to describe about this algorithmic approach to find the sum of two numbers. Beginning of an algorithm start, end of an algorithm stop. Each step of an algorithm is given one number. That is the first thing. Next thing is, if you see there is a definite sequence in which I have done these operations. First I have done the initialization, then I am trying to get the values which I require to find the sum. Step 3 I am calculating the sum. Step 4 I am printing what is the sum of A plus B and then I am stopping. So first what we'll do is whenever you write an algorithm, you always need to have a test plan or test your logic. Do not assume that this is correct until you have really tested it. So what I'm going to do here is when I first go to step one, this is how the memory is going to look. A is going to be zero, B is going to be zero and sum is going to be zero. The numbers in the red 1000, 1004 and 1008 indicate the memory location or addresses of A, B and sum respectively. So let's look at step one. Step one, everything is zero. Now what I am doing in step two is I'm reading the value of A and B. So what is happening in step two? A is 22, B is 51. I'm just giving you some example values. Sum is still zero because at this stage only I have entered value into A and B. Then what I'm doing is in step three, 
I am trying to do sum is a plus b. The value of a and b does not change, but sum ends up becoming 73, which is a plus b. And finally, what I am doing in the fourth step is I am saying write sum is sum, which is 73 is going to be printed on the screen. A little bit of explanation here. Whatever is within this double quote is going to be printed on the screen as it is. It's going to say sum is colon. So this is a message. And whatever is outside the double quote is actually the value of sum or the variable sum. So the way it is going to print on your screen is it's going to look something like this. It's going to say sum is colon 73. So on your screen, you can expect to see something like this. Sum is colon 73. So whatever was within the double quote, it came in as it is. Double quote is not going to be printed. It just indicates that whatever is in the double quote is to be printed as is. So a few important things. First thing is whenever you write an algorithm, always have a test plan like this, which depicts all the variables in the column. And at each step, make a note of how the variable values have changed. If you make any mistake, you will definitely not get the correct result at when you are getting to step four, indicating there is some bug in your logic. Now, the beauty of having a test table like this is you really do not need anyone to check your logic because at every stage, you just have to fill in the values of a, b and sum. Step two, a, b and sum. Suppose you had done some mistake in the steps or if you had not done it in the right order, you would have not got 73 at all. So now what we will do is now what I'll try to do is just to show you how important a sequence is. Let me try to interchange two steps. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to make step two as sum is a plus b and I'm going to put step three as step two. Now, if I have done this interchange, now let's try to do a dry run of this particular flowchart. So what has happened now is initially a, b all are zero and sum is zero. At step two, I have actually done sum is a plus b. So a plus b is zero. These have still remained zero. Now in the third step, now I am reading a, b. So let's say I read 21 and 22. Then what happens is sum is still zero because I have already changed the value of sum in step two. Then when I say write sum is, it is going to print the output result as zero rather than 21 plus 22, which happened to be 43 because I did not follow a proper sequence of trying to solve this particular problem. So again, we come back to our old story. Algorithm should have finite steps. The sequence sh should be in a proper order or a well-ordered sequence. So here you saw the problem. I just changed the sequence and you got completely wrong results. That's why I'm repeating it. Whenever you do your logic, you just have to create a table like this of all the variables in columns. Write down the steps, as many steps are there in the algorithm and then just see what is happening at each step. If you're not getting the correct result at a particular step, straight away it indicates there is a problem. Here itself, I could understand that something is a problem in these two steps because here, instead of getting sum as some number, I'm getting still as zero. That is why it's a good idea to give initially all the memory locations as zero because you can easily understand that there is some error. If you don't give it an initial value of zero, when you're writing a computer program, the computer assigns some random numbers to these particular memory locations. So I hope you understood what is an algorithm and how to use the algorithm approach to find the sum of two numbers. Although this is a very simple problem, it teaches you everything you will be writing in all the future algorithms. Most important learning from this, the test plan or the test table because two advantages. One is you'll know whether your logic is correct. Second, you do not need anybody to check your logic. This is how you need to master programming logic.